Hello, I'm Tim Koval, your host for Gumshoe Stories, a deep dive into the still unsolved Missy Beaver's murder case. This is Episode 7. If you're new to the case, be sure and go back to Episode 1 and work your way forward, because we're going to be talking about things that we'll assume that you know about, and if you have just discovered this case, you may not be familiar with with the things that we're talking about. So just make sure and go back to the beginning and educate yourself about this case before coming back to this episode. One other note, we're doing episode seven a little bit differently from previous episodes. In the past, we were just an audio only episode. Um, But in this episode, the subject matter requires us to rely on some visual aids. It's important to see what I'm talking about as I'm referencing it. So please make sure that you watch this episode rather than just listening to it. This is episode 7, Behind the Wheels with the Killer. We're going to look at the church property as it can be seen from the highway, and what you can see and what you can't see. We'll focus on exactly where in the parking lot the Camp Gladiator Fitness class conducted their workouts. We'll take a trip also down to the SWFA Outdoor Store and park in the exact spot where the Nissan Altima parked in order to see from the driver's vantage point. Last thing before we get started, I do want to comment on this picture of Missy that is on your screen. I found this on Missy's mother's Facebook, and I hope that it's okay with her for me to use it. I like it that it's a little bit different from some of the other pictures that we've seen of Missy. It seems like the same pictures get used and reused a lot. And it's kind of a challenge to find new pictures of Missy that are just of her. It seems she was either behind the camera or else people were bringing her into pictures because they wanted her to be in a picture with them. So they were in a group. And that kind of speaks to who Missy is, that uh, people wanted to do that. Uh, But this is a picture of her by herself, and I just loved the bridge and the heavenly realm, and she just seems happy and at peace here. And I pray that happiness and peace are two qualities that her killer does not get to experience again for the rest of his or her life. Okay, let's get started with the episode. Okay, this is a satellite view of Creekside Church. Before we get into the details of this, Let me just explain why I think it's important to take a look at the property um, and the highway view of it uh, from the uh, vantage point of the killer. You know, we've talked a lot about whether Missy might be targeted, whether she might have been untargeted. I talked about the untargeted scenario in episode six. A lot of people, I think the majority of people, believe that Missy was targeted in some way. There seems to be a focus or an emphasis uh, on people that she knew, family, co-workers, friends, um, possible affair partners. But what what I want to look at today is the possibility that, yes, she might have been targeted, but targeted by someone she didn't know. What if she became um, the focus of interest of someone passing by on the highway some morning when she was setting up? So that's kind of what we're investigating here and taking a look at in the first part of this video. And so I want to take a look here at the satellite and point out a few things. Here you have the church. Here you have the highway, which is running uh, northwest to southeast diagonally. And it's a split highway. So what you're seeing here at the bottom of the picture is the northwest directional lanes on the other side of the median uh, out of the frame is the southeast. So the highway approaches the church and the church is kind of set down a little bit below. This is kind of a slope right here. So the church is not exactly at highway level, a little bit below, and it actually slopes further downward as you go toward the east, which is why the entrances Uh, on the back side uh, have stairs that go up to them. The Camp Gladiator workout group would work out in this area right here. And you see there's a lot of landscaping, a lot of trees around. Um, There's landscaped island here, landscaped island here. There's trees in the back. 
and then there's trees along the side. But they worked out right in this area. And right now I'm going to show you a picture from Missy's Facebook of the class working out in the parking lot, which is how we know that this was the area where they worked out. Okay, this is from Missy's Facebook from, I believe it was February. So it was pretty cold, but they were still working out outside February of 2016. And you can see in the lot, you can see where the traffic, or, or where, where the parking lot rather ends uh, and the grass begins. So this is the final row of parking spaces. And then here's a row of parking spaces here. And if I go back to another view, this is another view uh, basically from a different angle, also showing that last uh, parking spot uh, row there before the grass begins. And this also gives you a good view of the people who are passing by on the highway, the lights um, approaching. Um, we'll have to take a look further to see if they can really see the campers. It kind of looks like they've got a straight shot here, but there are a lot of trees. So we'll take a look uh, at the highway view here in a little bit. But you can see them working out, kind of doing their own things. Looks like uh, this person has some weights, some hand weights, and they're doing um, maybe jumping jacks or, or maybe just uh, lifting the weights over their head. Uh, here's someone else who's doing a similar routine, but they don't have any hand weights. And then this person over here is working out with a fire hose. And so now going back to our satellite view, in light of the picture that we were just showing you, this is the last row of parking before it hits the grassy area that we saw in the previous video. And there were some people who were right in that area. And uh, here, this is just kind of generally the area where, where those people were in that picture. Okay, what I want to do now is show an actual video. This is a daytime video shot of uh, the automobile view of the church and the area approaching the church. So this is what a driver would see if they were passing Creekside Church. So let me just hit play on that. And as it's playing, you can see how rural it is. You can see there's a lot of land, there's a lot of trees, and whoop, there's the church. And then we go on past the church, and that's it. Did you catch that? <laughs> it's kind of kind of fleeting, but what we're going to do now is we'll kind of pause it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to work our way forward from the beginning. See all the trees. Lots of trees there kind of blocking the view. So even though we had that photo from Missy's Facebook that showed the lights uh, of cars approaching, when you think about what they can actually see, obviously there wouldn't be as many cars as there are here, but uh, a lot of trees blocking the view. Um, and just to point out where they would have been working out, and again, it's very difficult to see, but right here is the last row of parking before it hits the grassy area. So that's the end of the paved area. And as we move forward just a little bit here, you can see that landscaped island, and then there's another one on the other side of it with the parking in between. So they would have been somewhere over in there, but it would not have been easy to see them, uh, in my opinion anyway. Not easy to see them at all. And it's not close. It's not like they're right there at the highway.
you know, you can look at the cars and see that, you know, a person's body is not nearly as, as wide um, as a car is. And uh, in the dark, with some lighting from, from these lamps, it's still going to be difficult to, to make out much. Now here is a view kind of higher up of both the church and the SWFA outdoor store. And this kind of gives you a good idea of how far apart they are. We're going to take a look uh, next at the, uh, the Altima and where the Altima is parked in the parking lot. We're going to park in that same spot and see how much we can see of the church from there. But... Before we do that, I thought I would show you the bird's eye view, which you've got the church up here, you got SWFA down here. You're going to see that uh, the car is actually facing the building, so it's facing this way, away from the church. And uh, it's going to be a challenge to actually see anything going on up at the church from where that person was. But uh, before we do that, let's just kind of get the lay of the land, so to speak, talking about other things that are around here. You can you can see how rural it is. I mean, there's nothing around here but trees and land. Over here on the uh, across from Creekside Church, like directly across, is something called Firefly Gardens, which is a wedding venue um, event center. And so they've got a little amphitheater down here where they can have weddings. They've got a, a building where they can have indoor weddings. So this is across the street, um, and I did see some people asking online about video surveillance from Firefly Gardens and asking the question, why wouldn't Firefly Gardens video have captured the person going into the church or pulling out of the church? Well, I wanted to give one comment on that. Just because a business has surveillance video doesn't mean that that surveillance video is going to capture everything around them. Usually when you install video equipment at your business, it's to protect your property. And here's the Firefly Gardens property leading up to the highway. They don't really have any reason to capture video from all the way across the highway. And it would take some serious night vision cameras even to be able to capture something at that distance. What they probably have at Firefly Gardens, if they have video at all, is a motion-activated system where the cameras have a field of view that is set to the property, to the buildings, and to the land immediately around the buildings. There wouldn't be any reason for them to capture video of something that's not on their property. So again, Firefly Gardens, if they have a video system, it wouldn't have captured something out here on the highway or on the other side of the highway because it's that's not what's of the most interest to them. If they were going to have someone trespass on their property, then they want their cameras trained on their property, not someone else's. I'll also point out that there's a big open area down here. And then right before you get to SWFA, which is right here, you have a private residence. So this is the nearest house to the church right here. No houses in between the wedding venue and SWFA and the church uh, other than this residence right here. And one would assume that police did check with them to see if they had video, to see if they saw anything or heard anything, but it was the middle of the night, so probably unlikely that they saw or heard anything. Okay, now we're going to go on and take a closer look at SWFA. Okay, here is SWFA satellite view of their building and the property around it. Here's Highway 287 passing in front of them. So in relation to this close-up view, as far as where the church is, the church is off screen way up here. Way, way, way up here, about a mile away. 
let me bring your attention to a landmark um, here that, that helps us orient ourselves to where the parking is and where the Altima was parked in the surveillance video that we have seen. This is a big circle with a, a cross in, in the middle of it. Um, I think what this is designed to be is like the crosshairs of a scope because we have an outdoor store that is into hunting apparel and gear and scopes and rifles and, and whatnot. So we'll call this the crosshairs. And this is after you pull in from the highway and approach the building, you come right across these crosshairs. What we saw from the Altima is that it pulled in came here, it passed in front and went around. Back here was where it maybe got kind of spooked or something and turned his lights back on because there were some cars parked back here. He went all the way around, came back, and then went around and parked right here next to this sort of semicircular landscaped island. He's in the first spot closest to the building right here. So he's facing the building. Now, keep in mind, remember, the church is way back here. See where my pen is going? Way back there. He's facing the building. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Now we're going to show you actual video footage. It's daytime footage. And um, let, me, let me actually give a, a shout out to a friend of mine, Barry Bailey, who took the video footage uh, from the highway of the church and is also um, the person who took the video that you're about to see from SWFA. So I thank him for getting that for us. Okay, before we get into the uh, reenactment video, I want to show you from the actual footage of the Altima parked in the SWFA parking spot exactly where it is so that we can orient ourselves to that. Up here you have the crosshairs that we talked about. Then you have that semicircular landscaped island. And then you have the Altima, which is parked in this first parking spot exactly next to that island. Okay, now we're going to show some actual footage of parking in that same spot. And you can see right now the car is parked in that parking spot next to that semicircular island. You got that shrubbery there, which is kind of right at the view of the highway. You can see cars passing just above where the shrubbery ends. And the driver is using the camera to turn around to try to spot the church and let me, let me pause this and go back. Because you can see the church, but it's not easy. The driver is turned all the way around in his seat. And he has the camera outside the window. And if you can see it, this is the church right here. Church building... You can just see kind of the top of the building, you know, the, the archwayed entrance there on the west side. You can see that right above the tree line. And that's all you can see. You've got all these trees that block a lot of the highway traffic. They potentially might block headlights of cars. You know, it's, it's interesting, at night, I, I'm not sure what lights you can see from here. If you turned all the way around in your seat and were looking for it, would you see headlights? Would you see um, the red and blue flashing lights of, of police car? If this person did come here to observe and test for a police response to an alarm that he or she thought, you know, that he might have triggered when, when breaking into the church, breaking windows. If that was the scenario, I don't know that this person could be parked in a worse spot than he is. 
to be able to look and see if someone comes to the church as a result of what he did. Why isn't he facing the other way? Why isn't he parked in a spot over here, aimed right there? I'm just not sure that he or she can see anything. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's watch this again from the beginning. Facing the building. That, that's where you're looking. If you're behind the wheel, just normally. He turns to his left. And now he's looking like directly behind him. This is the window frame right here. And then he has to kind of lean out in order to actually see the church back here. Here's a clear view of a car going this direction. Okay, and that's, that's that. So, uh, what do you think? Could he have chosen a better spot or a worse spot? SWFA is kind of down in a hole. It's kind of down below highway level. So, it, it's not where I would have chosen if I was the killer, if I were actually testing for an alarm. So, watching it in this manner kind of makes me rethink it. I don't, I don't know what it does to your thought process, but for me, it makes me rethink the whole theory of the killer breaking windows at the church and then coming down here to SWFA to check for a police response. I'm really questioning that now. Now, that's not to say that the Ultima is not involved. The Ultima could definitely be involved. And it's very coincidental for sure that all this was going on just very shortly before Missy was murdered uh, less than a mile away. So, you know, but the reason why he was at SWFA might be something, might be likely to be something other than testing for an alarm response, is what I'm saying. Okay, now just to refresh our memories, I'm going to show some of the video of the Altima when it did come to SWFA that night. It pulls in, goes across the crosshairs, makes its right. I'm not going to show everything over again. I'm just going to fast forward here. Um, actually, there was something that I wanted to take a look at. And I think it's at about the 450 mark. So I'm going to start here at 440. As I was reviewing this footage, it's something that I didn't really notice before. Okay, see this car that just came through here going northwest? Let's, uh, I'm going to change my speed. I'm going to slow it down to quarter speed. Okay. Watch the vehicle that approaches here, and then watch for a flash of red. Okay, here it comes. See that flash of red? What is that? I, I look to see if it repeats. I'm not sure. I can't really tell if it repeats. At first, I thought that maybe this was an emergency vehicle with just one flashing red light, which I think would be something to do with fire. But, but I'm just not sure. Um... As I watched it over and over again, and again, this may not have anything to do with anything, right? But as I watched it over again, 
it appears to be just one flash of red. And I don't know that it's a brake light because the car doesn't appear to slow down. Let's watch it one more time. Here it comes. And there's the flash of red. So, I don't know. Tell me what you think about that. I'd like to, to hear your thoughts on that in the comments. Is that vehicle... Um, splashing water and is the water somehow reflecting red um, or is it a signal maybe to the Altima? Seems kind of unlikely that it would be signaling the Altima but I don't know. There's one other thing that I thought was interesting. at the We're going to go to the point where the car turns its lights on and is about to leave the lot. Okay. You're going to see him turn his lights on simultaneously to a car passing by on the highway, which you see there's no cars right now. And so it just seemed a little coincidental that the timing was just right for the Altima to turn on its lights and for the passing car to be passing right at that moment. There go the lights. And there's the car. So I don't know what to think about that. That might be nothing. It might be something. What do you think about it? Okay, that's what I wanted to cover in this episode. Just to recap, we took a look at a satellite view of Creekside Church and familiarized ourselves with the parking lot, with the landscaping around it. We uh, took a look at a photo from Missy's Facebook of an actual camp that was going on in the parking lot and compared it to actual footage of driving past the church, although we passed it during the daytime, uh, just seeing all the trees that were there and how far back the church is from the highway. Um, tried to think about whether maybe someone traveling along that road, along 287, might possibly have been able to see enough to see Missy maybe setting up by herself one morning and become the focus of this person's negative attention that might cause them to stalk her and eventually murder her. You know, to me, it's it's a really open question uh, when you're traveling 75 miles an hour on that highway as to whether you can see much of anything. Uh, if you're a trucker and you're higher up, then yeah, maybe maybe you might have a better view of the parking lot um, past those trees and to where the Camp Gladiator participants were working out. But uh, it's just kind of a question to me as to whether if if someone were going to become a stalker of Missy, I just don't know that it would have happened that way. To me, it'd be more likely that someone took notice of her at the gym where she works out or someone took notice of her when she stopped to get a drink at a convenience store at 4 a.m. on her way to the church, something along those lines. Um, I, I'm just finding it kind of doubtful, kind of unlikely that someone saw her from the highway and took notice of her that way because it's just so far away and so many obstacles and um, the vehicle would be traveling at a, at a high rate of speed. So I just, I just don't think that it happened that way. And then we looked at SWFA. We looked at where that Altima is parked, facing the building, facing away from the church. The fact that SWFA is kind of down in a hole compared to the highway, and the church is really pretty far away, a mile away, and on the other side of the highway, and you'd have to contort yourself in the driver's seat in order to turn around and catch just really the top part of the building. Um, there's a lot of trees parked, or planted rather, near the highway uh, that impede a view, maybe even a view of, of headlights. Just, uh, just not sure that this person would have been parked there in that spot testing for a police response to an alarm. They could have been 
parked there for other reasons connected to Missy. But it just doesn't seem likely to me that they were parked there testing for police response to an alarm. Maybe you disagree. Make sure and put that in the comments and tell me tell me why. So I'm interested in what you have to say. We also took a look at a couple of interesting things in the SWFA surveillance footage. Uh, the vehicle passing by shortly after the Altima has parked that kind of has some some flash of red that I don't know what that was. And then we looked at when the car turns on its headlights to leave SWFA and the fact that a car is passing SWFA right at that moment when there had not been many cars passing SWFA leading up to that at that time of night. So I thought that was strangely coincidental. Don't know that this you know gives us any hard conclusions that we can draw, but it's interesting to look at things from from the point of view of the highway and what you can see and the parking lots and what can be seen, um, the lay of the land there, because a lot of times we just kind of focus on the buildings where these things occurred and, um, and the people. And, you know, it's important to look at everything. It's important to understand the geography and the topography and, um, and see what that tells us or what it doesn't tells it, tell us. So, um, thanks for, doing that with me today uh, here in episode seven as we've tried to go behind the wheel with the killer. And um, let's just continue to talk about Missy's case and publicize it and pray for her family that they will get justice and that Missy will get justice as the five-year anniversary of her murder approaches uh, very soon. Hopefully, police will be able to give us an update by then, and hopefully they've made some progress. That's all for now. I'm Tim Koval for Gumshoe Stories. Be careful out there and be kind to each other.